everyone. Welcome to Strip Club. Hello. Hi. Today I'm bringing you another pattern that uses two and a half inch strip. This one is called Chain Link. What we have here is my latest collection with Timeless Treasure called Tonga Pebble. Do you like it? Yes. Those soft blues, little teal in there. I love it. The blues and the teal are all come from a strip set. Then we also have a background fabric, and in this quilt we also have an accent fabric. In this quilt, that accent is sort of this gold, beige, cream, tan, accru, eggshell. It's this one. It's this print. Um, we are going to use the tube technique for part of this quilt. If you don't know the tube technique, we use it a lot in our patterns. You want to use the strip tube ruler. Side note, you don't have to. The pattern will give you instructions to use a regular square up ruler, but life is so much easier with the strip tube ruler. It is designed for this technique. So first we take our strips, and now we're going to partner, and we, we cut them in half, and we're going to partner one half a strip with a background strip. Now the pattern will also tell you you have to cut some squares off of these strips before you do this step, so follow the pattern. Here I have a print strip, so this is from the collection of print fabrics. This is clearly a different color combination. And we have a background fabric. We put these two strips together, both two and a half inches. So a quarter inch seam up along the top and a quarter inch seam along the bottom to make a tube. So we have the strips, we have the tube, and now we're going to go to the strip tube ruler. This is the strip tube ruler. This is actually Junior. This is the smaller of the two sizes. We have a larger one. He was the original one. You can do everything with the bigger one as you can with the smaller one. It's just easier for the smaller cuts to use the smaller ruler. Yeah. So here we use Junior, and we're going to take the measurement that the pattern says, put it on the bottom stitching line, and we are going to cut up and cut down to cut a triangle out of the tube. The triangle looks a little bit like this, and when you pull it away from the tube, you open it up to reveal your half square triangle block. Brilliant. Oh, you guys are so good. <laughs> Love it. So you'll go, the next cut will be off the top stitching line, and then the bottom, and then the top, and then the bottom, and then the top. So we will make a bunch of half square triangle blocks. This has the dog ear still on it. See a little dog ear here, and a little dog ear there. You have to cut those off. The $10 tip for cutting those off. Keep your triangle closed. Put the ruler back on the strip, or on the triangle, but in the different configuration, not that you're cutting out the triangle, the triangle's pointed down like this, and now you can, on the same measurement, cut away your dog ears. Cut, cut. Easiest way to cut off dog ears. All right, so we made a bunch of half square triangles. Good? Yes. Yes. Oh, did I tell you to cut off the top stitching line? Yes. Did I tell you the $5 tip? Did I not tell you the top oh, stitching line? Yeah. So next we will cut off the top stitching line, and then we'll do the bottom, and then we'll do the top, and then the bottom. It is the same angle of cut. So the first time we cut, it's a 45 degree like that. And then the next time we cut, it's exactly the same angle, but you still want to make fresh cuts. You want to conserve fabric, so don't go crazy, but you want fresh cuts for accuracy. So the $5 tip. I tell you, your second cut needs to be off of the top stitching line. But this is an awkward cut. So instead, of flipping the ruler, let's flip the strip set. Now that same top stitching line becomes the bottom stitching line and we can place the ruler on the bottom stitching line. Cut, cut, flip, cut, cut, flip, cut, cut. Easiest, easier way. Very hard to put into directions, so you'll never see that in the pattern. That's why it's uh, a $5 tip and I have yet to get the $5. <laughs> All right, so we have a bunch of um, half square triangles and we're going to put those aside. Now we're going to start to build our block. To build our block, we will use the stitch and flip technique. So what I have here is a print rectangle and I have a background square. On the background square, we've drawn a diagonal line. You draw a faint diagonal line. Mine is heavy so that you guys can see it in the back row. But you'll draw a faint diagonal line, place it on the rectangle just like this, or follow the pictures in the pattern. Placement will matter. You will stitch just a thread away from that line. 
Flip this over. Make sure your edges are flush with the top and the side. If they are, bring it back down and then trim away the excess fabric. You don't need that there. If you're very ambitious, you can stitch a half inch away from that drawn line and create a little baby half square triangle. <laughs> Have fun. So, okay, stitch and we create a rectangle, a segment that looks like that. A one thread over to sew from the line. And when I say to the point, I mean to this point. And the reason we stitch a thread over from that point is because the fold will eat up some of the fabrics and you want to get it all the way to the edge. So if you sew exactly on the line or if you sew a thread over the other side, it might not quite get there. And you don't want that. You want it all the way to the edge. We're going to do the same thing now. Matching fabric on the back. A square this time. I'll do it in the same direction. A square background fabric on top of a square print to the edge, flip, and now you have a half square triangle block. So I'm going to take these two pieces, add a background square, and we're going to start to see the block build. So you see how those are the same two pieces as I originally had, only now they're sewn together into a four patch with a background segment. And then we're going to build from here. Every section that we do will have a, a stitch and flip of some kind. In this case, we are going to create a stitch and flip, same technique. This time we have background on one side and a background on the other side. So we have two little triangles in the rectangle. Notice these colors are the same. These are the same fabrics. And we're going to continue to grow. I always have to refer to the paper. That's why we do graphics when we do this. Now I'm going to go here and here adding an accent square on the edge of this segment. Okay? So in this quilt, our accent is this vibrant blue. Now, making sure I'm right. Yeah? Okay, we're still growing. And now we're on page five. If you're following along on your picture pages. Now, it doesn't look like it all fits together, but that's how it'll sew together. And by the magic of television, oh, I didn't leave enough room. I should plan better. Voila, there's your block. It is one simple block. So you're going to make a bunch of those, in this case, 16. Flip them around, sew them together to create your design. Can you see the block in the quilt? Yes. Here, starting, and this is one corner, and I'm going to go up and to the left. There's the other corner. That's your block. So as far as a block goes, it's pretty unimpressive. I mean, if I looked at that block, you know, I wouldn't want to make a pot holder out of it. I wouldn't want to do a wall hanging out of that one single block. But when you put them together, that little open triangle, which is here, comes together with four triangles, with three other triangles, to create this fantastic star. And then those outer pieces, which look like they serve no purpose over here, four of them come together to create this sort of X. Now, the accent fabric is not critical but I love the way it adds a second definition to the design. I think without this accent fabric, things would get a little more lost. Still be pretty, but we're not done. Okay, this is the throw. It is four blocks by four blocks. Once we sew all the blocks together, we add the borders. Notice the borders have cornerstones. 
This is a fantastic design element that takes the design all the way out to the corners. To do the um, cornerstones, <clears throat> I've given you options in the pattern. One option is to use the same fabric as your border one fabric. If you don't like the way that looks, you have an extra strip that you can use for the three outer pieces here. Hmm? Another option is just to pick leftover squares, because you will have leftover squares, and use those for the corners. The reason we gave you options is because in one of the quilts that we made, border one was faint, and the cornerstone just died when we used those pieces on the outer edges. Here is the top right cornerstone. I'm talking about these three squares. One, two, three. So we used a very light print, and it almost um, blended in with the background, and then the cornerstone just died. So we're like, OK, well, we can't automatically assume you're going to use border one, although that's an option. You have enough fabric to do it. Instead, let's just use a print strip. Now, if you want to do a scrappier look, this is what a scrappier look might be. So the cornerstone is the same principle. These are the half square triangle blocks that we cut, accent, and then we have um, squares from our print strips. Those are sewn together. So to do the borders, we have border one and border two are sewn together as a set, and then cut to your length. And another set is cut to your width. You add the cornerstones on, and then you attach it to your quilt. All right? So cornerstones. Very good? Yes. Any questions? It's pretty, huh? Yeah. yeah when, the, when the design comes into the borders, it's always something fun and a little special. All right, is somebody going to ask me the question I always get? Come on. Do I have it in another colorway? Yes, I do. Otherwise, I wouldn't have prompted you, right? So now you can see what it looks like in different colors and what the baby looks like. It's sweet, isn't it? This is a Riley Blake collection, so this started as a jelly roll or a strip two bundle. And then we added this pink. The pink does not come from the collection, but it was just the right touch of a little color, but not much, to stop the design of the blocks before you go into the borders. The back is fun, too. This is just a plaid print. <laughs> Very Laura Ashley, right, to have the, a plaid or a different print like that on the back. So those are my quilts for chain link. May I show you other quilts? Yes. OK, um, last month, we had a sad story, and an illness prevented us from having a second colorway. And I said, well, maybe next month I'll have the second colorway. So I do. Yay! Last month was Wes, no, <coughs> was Nine Sisters. Nine Sisters. And somebody made the joke, one sister is enough. <laughs> so, will you help me? <clears throat> so this is the twin. And this is in fun Ruby Star Society quilts, so totally different look. Oh. What do you think? Do you remember last month? Oh, yeah. Totally different, huh? Yeah. This really cool thing does look awesome. Nice contrast, very angular, dark. But wait. There's more. <gasps> okay, don't, don't freak out on me. <laughs> now, this is exciting because nobody has seen this, except for maybe the three people that worked on it. Um, this is my next collection of fabric called Tonga Sumatra, and here it is in Nine Sisters. 
You like it? Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Oh, good, good. Also uses the strip tube ruler to make all these star points. Thank you. It's the golds and the browns, such rich colors, and it, it's a terrific design. And then the quilting's pretty, too. It, uh, we, I will. This uh, fabric will be shipping in December, January. So you get to a preview of it. <coughs> Nine sisters. Nice, huh? Yeah. So if I can draw your attention to the quilt to the right, same fabrics, but this is our next block of the month. Remember, the line is called Sumatra, and the quilt is called House Blend, as in coffee. <laughs> the quilt is not hard. Um, it's half square triangles, and we use the tube technique that I just showed you, which is, remember, brilliant. <laughs> we use a lot of the tube technique to make the half square triangle blocks to put it all together. So this will be coming out, uh, again, December, um, uh, early January. It's called House Blend, and you don't have to do it in those fabrics. You can do it in whatever fabrics you like, but the pattern will be, probably be available in November. One more? Yes. Since we're talking Tonga Sumatra, I have one more quilt to show you. And this just came in from the quilter. Mona did a great job quilting this for us. Make sure we get this right, because there is an up and a down. This is one of our favorite uh, quilt patterns. This was designed by Georgette Delorco. That's my mom. And this is one of the original strip club patterns that we did. We've been doing strip club patterns for 12, 13, 14 years. Um, so not only is my mom very talented in creating quilting designs, as in patterns, but she also does digitized quilting designs. So if you look closely, it is custom quilted. It's done on the um, Pro Stitcher, which is the Handy Quilter automatic or robotic quilting um, system. Uh, but she has this pattern, the, the digitized design, available for all formats. So if you have a robotic system and a long arm, you can buy her designs and create your own hanging gardens. The design, I think, is called Hanging Gardens, or you can search on her website, which is Quilter's Niche, and uh, look for Hanging Gardens, because it's deliberately designed for this pattern. And look at the... So pretty. All right, so that's Tonga Sumatra. They can't be used on a regular sewing machine? No, no, it's a, it's a long-arm uh, digitized design thing. <coughs> Very nice? Yes. Okay. Oh, she also did the digitized designs for House Blend, too. You notice that one's custom quilted also? Show the back. Oh, show the back? Of course. So this is Hanging Gardens. Yeah, but you really, you really see it, don't you? Yeah. Turned out nice. Just lovely. Okay. I have no more quilts to show you. Do you have any questions for me? You have a question. For the this month's quilt, did any other color combinations intrigue you that you thought about? Oh, did any other color combinations intrigue me? Well, I originally designed this in EQ. That's how I do a lot of my design work. And I had these files, so I've been playing with these files, and I know this collection is coming. So I, I imprinted on this collection. Um, but you can see that it would look good in just about anything. I, it was, I was this close to using a CAFE collection, so a lot of vibrant, bright colors. Um, but I don't know. This one just, it just spoke, spoke to me. So what you're saying is that whatever, if I want to make it for a little girl, I could just go whatever suits my fancy. Yes, so what I'm saying is if you like the strips that you buy yeah. and you like the quilt, you will like, or like the pattern, you will like the finished quilt. My biggest advice is when you pick strips, is to pick strips that have, um, that don't have, they don't compete with the background. In other words, they don't have a lot of the same color of the background in the print. So when we picked this one, there were a lot of fabrics in the collection that had white in them. We pulled those out. We used, we pulled out anything that was light or anything that had too much white print in it. Because then it looks like your pattern has holes in it because it just blends into the background. Another thing is try to pick an accent fabric that is, it has contrast to the rest of the strips, 
and that pops and complements it. You don't want anything too glaring. We could have gone with a dark on this. We probably could have gone with this blue, but this blue is already in the quilt. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted something that was different. And just that this color just sort of complemented the whole thing. But in this one, you see the accent is more subtle. It's a pink with some, I think those are shoes on it. But it's, yeah. it's the darkest pink in there, so it has some pop. But it's a little more subtle. There's no wrong answer. Just make sure your background has contrast, because that defines the whole pattern. But you will like it. Any other questions? Nothing else? Oh, you have a question in the back. Yes, sir. Can you use a dark background with light prints? You can use a dark background with light prints. Yes. And I'd like to see it next month. Can you have it for me? <laughs> <laughs> Nettie said yes, so we'll see that next month. Well, we won't be here. We're going to be in Mexico. Sorry. Oh, well, you can bring the quilt he before you go. To, but we're not going to be here to show it. Oh, but you can just leave it. <laughs> she said she's not going to be here. I said, oh, just bring the quilt. We don't need you to be here. Just bring the quilt for us. Okay, I, I'm here. I hear you as a challenge. All right, we'll see what we can do about that for next time. Do a dark background. Any other questions? No? Okay, my friends. Thank you very much for coming. We'll do it another, we'll do it next month with another pattern that uses two and a half inch strips.